Welcome back to Oakwell. Barnsley, a goal to the good at half-time here against Sunderland. Uh, a good goal it was if you weren't with us. Wayne Biggins, the goal scorer for Barnsley. And we can hear from what I imagine is a fairly happy Barnsley manager, Mel Maitland, with Rob McCaffrey. Mel, a cracking opening goal, but uh, John Gordon causing your kinds of problems with his pace at the back. Yes, well, we thought that um, would be anyway. We, um, we said that, of course, with Harford coming in, that he'd be looking for the bits and pieces behind. But I, was, I, I just felt that we, we started off well. We got a great goal to start off, and we should have built on that. But well, we're too in, you know, impatient. We wanted to knock balls in and try and get in behind too, too quickly instead of building up a little bit uh, with more patience and trying to get in, into wider positions. So hopefully this off we can be a little bit more patient. See how it goes. Join the commentary team again. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. And you certainly echoed those words of Mel's about the goal. It was a belt of a goal from Biggins. Let's hope we get a few more like that in the second half. So straight away. Sunderland have a throw-in, which Kevin Ball has taken and Kaloon has turned his man and might get uh, Goodman in here inside the penalty area, laid back in the end by Taggart. That was a good turn by Kaloon. Yeah, he turned well, but unfortunately Don Goodman didn't. Uh, his touch let him down, should have had a chance there. <laughs> He's done it again, Kaloon, but this time it's run away from him. Taggart clear. Redfern, Terry Yorath talking uh, there during the interval about the fact that uh, Redfern and Hendon have rather been bypassed in this match as has Cunnington and the Sunderland side and there's a poor effort from Orr which presents the ball to Kerry who just loves jinking forward like that in possession didn't get far that time so now it's Fleming calls for somebody to come to help him out and here inside the area is O'Connell shadowed by Butcher Barsley have three men if he can only turn and get him across they have to settle for the throw in taking it and, uh, an intelligent run made by Hendon but the touch on the end of it not what he would have wanted important game for him though trying to impress in his first game for the club yes he's got to get into the game a bit more as uh, as people said at half time uh, red filling himself a little bit quiet in the second half of the first half so hopefully they'll get a bit more of the ball and they'll play with a bit more urgency this half Taggart's clearing header, back to Ball, and then a big header from Ball. He and Taggart having a private match at the moment. From Redford, it's gone out to Archdeacon. Well, he expects Sunderland to snap in with the challenges in this half. They've got to get something out of this match. Otherwise, it'll set the alarm bells ringing up at Roker just a little bit. I know there are plenty of teams beneath them in the table at the moment. But uh, everybody's running out of time at this stage of the season. Points in the bag are what people really want. That's right, John. Here's Goodman. Knocked down for Harford. Back for Goodman inside the area. And uh, well, no, that was definitely not a foul by Taggart. No, I made a lot of that, didn't I? Another good bit of link-up play between Harford and him. No signs again of them uh, linking together as a front pairing. Bennett's ball now. Fleming under it. Picks out Hendon. Steve Fisk, Steve Davis. Uh, must be offside, O'Connell. I think they're missing Andy Rammel today, in particular, Barnsley. Well, they're just delaying again, aren't they? I mean, they're playing at the Sunderland's hands at the back. They hold the line at the back forward, Sunderland, and they two or three passes there. Should have gone in a little bit early, and the forward will be disappointed. He didn't get early service there. Butcher's free kick. from Charlie Bishop, who's played most of the season as a centre-back. Redfern, from behind. Oh, then he gets another one from Kevin Ball as well. It was out of your shot, but there was a little altercation there. Bennett, strong header. Hours now stroking it, but ineffectively. A good gift again to Kerry, and now it's Fleming. Shorter for Kerry this time. 
generally drifts in field with the ball at his foot has to play a meaningful pass and it was a bit too uh, it's a bit diffident really and Redfern wasn't sure about it so the second half hasn't quite got going as yet Harford tussling for it once more and it was important that Barsley won that one Howes was outside Harford but as it is it's uh, a longer ball for O'Connell now and Tony Norman coming gets it straight up the middle oh, Redford might try his luck from here if he's accurate he'll score he isn't Norman was scuttling back to his goal Redford knew the shot was on and uh, he, he's smiling about it but he knows he could have been a real hero for the day well there was half a chance wasn't there for a moment there when uh, Norman's come out of his box here we see the, the lad running through he's gone to clear it miscued it one touch another touch he's looked he saw the space he had a pop and he's just floated over the top half a chance really certainly set up the second half again now it's been quite a while since that goal from Wayne Biggins but Barnsley happy enough to be in the driving seat at 1-0 Tom Goodman looks happy with life despite the fact that hardly any decisions have gone for him today keeps smiling doesn't he out only as far as Archdeacon and then uh, for Redford to have another tilt that one might screw away as far as Curry but Howers was there and uh, he loses it to Curry and he's got a corner he's just a little hesitant there Howers and put under pressure by Curry it's cost his side a corner kick yes Curry uh, persevered he could have gone for the first ball he waited and the crowd had a little bit of a moment for doing that he went for the second one and managed to work a corner there for him they haven't had many corners, Barnsley. Let's see what they've been working on. Archdeacon gives a signal anyway, and it's swinging in. Well, the keeper stood on his line, and he's eventually hacked it out with his boot. And Redford has another crack, and Bennett eventually clears. It was a very strange interlude. The keeper was confused by the swirl on the ball, I think, from Archdeacon. I think everybody was there. Everybody was waiting for that near post football. Nobody got a touch. So we didn't carry it to the far post, and... Uh, Tony Norman got a bit of a mix-up, here we see it coming in, don't think anybody gets a touch, it carries right to the far post, comes off a defender, the goalkeeper slips, and just manages to clear it to the edge of the box. He was worried about the back pass, maybe. Things happen so quickly in a game, though, I don't know, they think so fast sometimes. go on in a goalkeeper's mind all the time however now in that sort of situation it just means was that a back pass or not what do I do I better kick it yes there's a lot for goalkeepers to think about nowadays uh, the new rules come in and it really does make life difficult for them two Sunderland substitutes today Peter Davenport just giving the uh, wave to the fans and Michael Gray is the other one gotta be careful with Sunderland they have two M Grays a Michael and a Martin today it's Michael who's on the bench Armstrong and ball. Not a good ball. But uh, Ford collects it halfway line. They keep getting themselves into blind alleys. Harford. Trying to sweep that one through to Goodman. Here comes Kerry again. He finds it so easy to beat opponents, he often beats the same man twice. Yes, but Barnsley don't want him having the ball so deep. They want him to have the ball around the edge of the opponent's box where he can really do some damage. Wayne Biggins is just struggling a little. He, he was limping towards the end of the first half. But for the moment, he's the only man who's got his name on the score sheet. Taggart's having a battle royal there with Harford, and he won that one. And the sort of players who love that, they love that sort of a day. Curry now, streaking up on his outside is Fleming. 
It's not a bad pass either, and here comes Fleming inside the area. It will produce a corner for Brown with this. That's what we said, David Curry, getting the ball in the opponent's half, bringing other people into play, causing danger, and getting a corner for Barnsley. Terry Butcher looks battle-hardened, doesn't he? He's in there now, marshalling the defence, and Sunderland have actually got everybody inside their own penalty box here. They haven't left anybody up, so the ball's bound to come back at them as Archdeacon takes it. Can they find anybody in a red shirt? Well, it's out from Harford. But you saw there that Sunderland just had no options but to continue defending. That's a bit unusual, Chris, really, not to leave anybody out. Especially with the height that they've got in the Sunderland team. When you've got Harford and Butcher and Bennett and Ball uh, and Gary Hours and Richard Ord, who are all big lads, you can afford to leave somebody up front. Seems rather negative ploy to me. Remember, they need the result more than Barnsley in many ways to Sunderland. 15th in the table. And they've had a very in and out sort of season. Malcolm Crosby, of course, made way for Terry Butcher midway through it. And here are Barnsley now, building in concerted numbers, but the pass wasn't quite good enough, so Colum chases away and gets Goodman moving outside the area. Still Goodman, this time he swings it across towards Cunnington. An easy clearance for Bishop to effect. And then Davies up to Biggins. He's quite left-footed, Curry, but they're playing wide on the right because he likes to come infield with the ball. That's right. Unfortunately, nobody on either side is really putting their foot on it and, and spreading the play at the moment. It's all a bit frantic. We need somebody to be a bit more relaxed on the ball. That's not a great pass at all from Archdeacon. Gave it away to Ball, who drives on up the middle and drives a shot in as well, and it's parried by Whitehead. What a good effort that was from Kevin Ball, the defender, fully convinced he could score. And he made a pretty good job of it, and here he is again now, winning the throw-in. That's confidence for you, Kevin Ball coming forward on his wrong foot, really, on his left foot, and bringing a good save out the goalkeeper. Well, he does get a few goals every season. He's got three this time. Butcher beating Biggins, but the bounce might yet favour Barnsley. They're in possession with Archdeacon. Through the middle, lovely ball. This might finish it now. Biggins, no, he attempted to chip Norman. And probably seven, eight times out of ten, you fancy Biggins to put those away. Yes, he took it very early. A lot of people might say now, oh, he should have took it on, but... If he'd loved Tony Norman, everybody would have said a great goal. Here there's a ball through, split the defence, the flat back four. He has a little look, sees Norman coming, tries to lob it over him. But Tony's a big goalkeeper and the execution wasn't really as good as we expect from Wayne. That might have won the day for Barnsley, as it is. Colum's here inside their penalty box. Good tackle and clearance from Steve Davis on Colum. Goodman this time. That's a goal kick. That was certainly a lovely ball through from Archdeacon, which gave Biggins the chance. But Tony Norman, as you said, is a big fellow. He's about six feet two and a very polished goalkeeper on his days. One of the best. That's the danger when you play a very square back four. You can, you can get split with one pass. Which is header has fallen handily for Redfern. Archdeacon, a lot of movement up front from Barnsley at the moment, and Biggins is trying to get there. Bennett's gone with him, stride for stride, Gary Bennett. I think this is a key phase of the game, because if Barnsley do get the next match, I think they'll go on to get the full points. I think they've just got to raise the game, Barnsley. The, the, the signs of it last two or three minutes there. If they raise it just a touch more, I think they're going to go on and win this. That's right, and here's Curry for them now. Biggins calling for it up the middle. It's come instead to Archdeacon. And rather took his eye off the ball as he passed it. And that cost him, and that's going to cost Hendon a foul. And Sunderland are going to make their first substitution, and... They will bring on Michael Gray in place of Richard Ord, and I think that's a straight swap, really. Yes, they're probably getting a little bit worried with uh, Curry coming into the game a little bit on the right-hand side. 
this young lad's a promising lad. I think quite a lot of him up in Sunderland. Well, he scored in the first minute of his debut against Barnsley. That was back in uh, December when Sunderland beat Barnsley 2-1. At the moment, the table's being reversed. Butcher wants it up there from Bennett, and it'll come to him as well. In fact, it's gone over the top of him in the end. Oh, a very poor clearance, and here's Cunnington! Fine save! Whitehead had to get down quickly. Cunnington could hardly have struck it better. And that's an excellent stop from Barnsley's keeper, whose confidence is growing. Lovely strike, close in as well. Ball into the box. Nice little layoff here. And he took it early on the half volley. Good save down to his left. As we saw from that replay, it was swerving too. So all credit to Phil Whitehead. Sunderland looking for their equaliser. Hours pumps it long. Harford back post, headed away by Taggart. One or two dodgy moments for the Barnsley defence. Goodman certainly worked that one-two with Cunnington very well. And if Sunderland are to get back into this match, they need to do so now. Here's Calhoun. And here, flattened straight up in the air by Hendon. And Bennett. Very losing out to Armstrong, but it's Barnsley's throw-in. Barnsley won, Sunderland nil, a Wayne Biggins free kick is the only goal so far. Sunderland have won only one of their last six matches, so uh, they're on the slide a little at the moment. It's not a good time of the season to go through that sort of a run either. And they've not been conceding many goals, but they've not been scoring many either, apart from last Saturday when they had a good 3-0 win at home against Peterborough. Fleming's throwing for Barnsley. Biggins coming towards him. Well, Biggins has certainly been an excellent signing uh, from Stoke City this season. Not just for his goals, I think he's given the whole team a lift because of that. Yes, yeah, a very underestimated player. He's, as we said before the game, has given good value for money. And a very sharp player. Ball supports again. Goodman, edge of the area, tries to tee up Armstrong now. Tag at the strong man again. Bennett, who brought it down, and supplies Gray. Cunnington's calling for it up the inside right channel. And they'll now take on Archdeacon. Well, that didn't go out, but it is now. It's got a mile out. It would have been an excellent conversion at Twickenham. Right? Certainly worth having a look, Chris, at this save from uh, Whitehead. Again. Yes, good one two, Cunnington, good awareness, nice little ball back. Lovely half volley, wasn't it? Six inches off the ground all the way. And a great save. In a nutshell, but, uh, in a nutshell as well, Barnsley is still leading by that one goal from Biggins. And Bishop, I don't think that's going to produce much. We really had a wretched start to their season here at Oakwell. Took them a couple of months to record a win, but since then, they've done ever so well. Oh, Kalu, checked by Fleming that time. Steakham picking it up from O'Connell and then down the line. It's stayed in marginally, but Butcher must roll this one back for Tony Norman. There's clearance, force for Hendon. Now Fleming, encouraging moments for Barnsley because there's a lot of men up and around the box, but that was a very poor delivery of a pass. Well, with no hope whatsoever. Well, Barnsley still can try to win it back, and he's going to go down under the tackle of Armstrong, and Barnsley will have a free kick. It was all a bit scrappy, that, wasn't it? Yes, that, that's what Ian Hendon's good at. Determination, won the tackle, went to get the ball again, and they've got a free kick. But as you say, very scrappy. But Biggins will be thinking, 
that he found the top corner with a free kick from a not dissimilar position in the first half. And it'd be rather nice for him if he could do the same again. It's Archdeacon's side here, isn't it? With the left foot. It is. from that side of the goal before however Archdeacon might be the one this time it is Archdeacon uh, straight against the defender uh, and another go begins over the top let's have another word from the Welsh manager Terry Yorra well, I definitely think it's been Barnsley's half so far uh, John uh, they played much better football than they did in, in the first half uh, but Sunderland did have that one chance uh, Cunnington was it who had that shot and uh, I thought he'd have been better going across the goals there. And maybe, just maybe, they'd have, they'd have got a goal. But I, I, I can just sense Sunderland just losing a bit of heart here. Not playing with that much confidence. And uh, I think Barnsley are a good value for their win at the moment. OK, we shall see. Sunderland's certainly coming here on the back of some poor results. And that's uh, a free kick for them. Found Butcher. But Barnsley able to clear fairly comfortably. Now there's a race on O'Connell and Bennett. And uh, Bennett comes away unscathed and then hits it back over the top, but there's still a man in an offside position. Sunderland's player manager Terry Butcher, of course, has been known throughout his career as one to motivate fellow players. Chris McMenemy alongside him, if ever he had to do that, it's now. Yes, he's got to really rally the troops now and, and push them on. They'd, as as we've said, they're just the one chance and maybe another half chance this half they've really got to push Barnsley back now they're 1-0 down away from home in front of a large support up it goes and the Bennett got underneath it and Tony Norman will catch all those all day but he wasn't able to clear quickly it was just uh, 12 months ago Sunderland were uh, on their way to the FA Cup semi-finals and uh, Eventually through to the final to play Liverpool. They lost, of course, at Wembley, but it was a marvellous time for the club. They certainly found it hard to relive that this season, to live up to it. And still they trail by a goal to nil today. To whom? <laughs> yeah, it's enabled a cross to come in eventually. Bennett down the line for ball. He's had a good day, Kevin Ball for Sunderland, led by example. Butcher looking to get Goodman through the middle, and Hours has gone there too to support him. But apart from the Harford header over the top in the first half and the excellent shot uh, by Cunnington and saved by Whitehead, Barnsley have controlled things pretty well. Yes, they're defending well. Taggart and Davis are doing particularly well against uh, the threat of Harford and Goodman up there. But generally, they've just picked the game up a little bit and they seem to be in control. It would be nice to see them get another goal. Ball a bit tight in the midfield. Spread it out somehow. So Butcher goes for a longer approach. Davis is heading. Crunching tackle there. Half and won it for Sunderland. That's the sort of approach they need. Cahoon has a wide man supporting. That is Kevin Ball coming up from the right back position. And here's his deep ball in. Half of the whistle has already sounded. Offside was the verdict. And Sunderland still can't get it together. Well, you see Mick Harford's face there, he's disappointed. He thrives on service and he's not really getting any this half. Wanted a good cross, didn't get it. And he's desperate for some, for some service from the wide positions. So Sunderland's fans have all journeyed down from the northeast, but at the moment it looks as though they're going to be journeying back pointless. There's still some time to go in the match. They always take good support away with them. Could be another change. Peter Davenport is Sunderland's second substitute today. Former England international, of course. All the colours once against Republic of Ireland. There's an Irish defender's clearance. Taggart. Then Hendon. Attempted a pass that was perhaps never on, and ours has gained uh, possession. Tries to get Gray motoring up that left side. And uh, it's going to be a goal kick. 
was a very inadvisable pass that Hendon played there. Yes, he uh, got caught on it there, and, and David Curry did well. He defended well for the team, tracked the lad all the way back, uh, went for a goal kick. Good defensive header as well from Jerry Taggart. Not really an Irish defender's header, although I don't think he meant it in that way, did he? Barnsley still a goal to the good, courtesy of Wayne Biggins' super strike in the first half. And he's up front now, hoping the ball comes to him as it's swept out here wide to Charlie Bishop. Archdeacon, who supplies good crosses, hits one in, and it was a good cross as well, and Redford taking it on the chest, breasted it down past Terry Butcher, there was just too much pace on it for him to complete what would have been a, a super goal, an exquisite one in fact. Shadowed by Bennett and did intelligently then holding it up for O'Connell. And O'Connell goes on and is fouled, no question about that, by Butcher. I don't think referee Callow will take any strict measures against Butcher. It was, it was a bit of a lunge and a stumble. Yeah, it made, it made his mind up Terry there, didn't he? Yes. Planted his feet and used the rest of his body. But for me, that's only a yellow card and certainly not a red. I think that's right. Well, the heart must pound a little quicker these days in those situations for defenders. Free kick then. Biggins and Redfern there. Archdeacon comes across. We've already seen how Biggins can hit them. And Archdeacon will run over it, Biggins plays it down the line, Archdeacon, can he keep it in? He did just, I thought it was going to go out. He did really well to even keep that one in play, there was just a fraction too much pace on the pass. Nicely worked all the same. Yes, they worked on that on the training ground by the looks of it. We thought it was overplayed here, good pace, whipped it back in, just gets there before the line. And oh, if, if nobody got a touch, Terry Butcher just got a touch to it there, otherwise it would have gone straight through. Almost impossible to defend against, and it could have led to an own goal, that's the sort of thing that happens. That's right. Huge punt down there from Whitehead, Butcher's head there, oh, on Sunderland's behalf. And now Whitehead can hit it downfield again, which he must do with his boots because it was played back to him by Archdeacon. twice winning it for Sunderland but Harford not able to find Goodman who however sticks to his job well and then forces the defender to put the ball out and now Davenport is going to come on as Sunderland's second substitute the player he will replace will be John Calhoun Bobby Ferguson gives him a little pat on the head well, I wonder if Sunderland uh, can yet pull this one round. Terry Yorick. Well, uh, you know, obviously Davenport had to come on. Um, but it's whether, you know, you, you take Kaloon off, who's possibly uh, can get forward and maybe score a ball. I know he hasn't done that. But uh, Owe is in the left side position, left side midfield position for Sunderland. Has had an absolute nightmare. And uh, I don't know whether they've kept him on to protect the young lad or not. We'll never know. Perhaps we'll uh, have a word with Terry Butcher afterwards about that. Yeah. Here is Gray. The ball in just eludes uh, Cunnington. Headed down by Goodman for Harford. It's bobbling around in there before Taggart gets it out as far as Ball. Still is here, Ball, and swerves a shot in and just over the top. Kevin Ball's had two really good attempts in this match. What a long ranger. Uh, that one was curling all the way. Yes, he's getting forward now and again. He's come onto his wrong foot again. He tried to bend it in the far corner. Just a little bit too high, but a good effort from who somebody who really is a central defender. Well, Bobby Ferguson on the bench, the assistant to Terry Butcher. He and Butcher 
must have some form of sign language during the game to decide on substitutions. Up front, Biggins heads on. Butcher. Norman able to collect this. Biggins has stayed down on this occasion. And the referee is asking Terry Butcher to put the ball out of play, which he will do sportingly, because Biggins has taken a wrap on the head, I think. And sensible refereeing to say, let's get him treated as quickly as possible. Especially bearing in mind what happened last week at Rotherham, of course. And we all send our best wishes to John Buckley, the Rotherham player, who was carried off and was on a life support machine for three or four days in Sheffield. But uh, happily, he's now regained consciousness, and uh, we all send our best wishes to John Buckley. Terry Butcher put the ball out of play there, responding to the referee's request. And such is the sportsmanship of the game these days that Barnsley will immediately give the ball back to Sunderland, I'm sure. Well, Machin on the bench. Uh, looks as though he's uh, bewildered by it all, I think, at the moment. And uh, Wayne Biggins is all right. It's good to see. We keep referring to his goal, by the way, today, which was a stunner. I can tell you there's an even better one coming up in our goals roundup later after this match. Watch out for that. We've had 31 minutes of the second half, so Mick Harford's got to keep battling away for another 14. As Daniel Graham, the other Barnsley substitute there, just takes his place back on the bench. Good header, Butcher, that was solid. So is that from Bennett. It's a Davison in front of Goodman. Harford wondering who to give it to. Curry's actually done a good defending job for Barnsley today on that right side. He's not. He's been tracking well. Yes, he's had to track people who were getting forward uh, now and again, and he's done a good job for the team in that respect. But I'm sure everybody wants to see him in the other half, providing that flair that he, we all know he has. Well, that's true. And that's Bennett's header out again. It's been a strange performance by Sunderland. At times they've shown the capabilities to break Barnsley down, but they don't seem to have had quite sufficient ambition. Yes, and I think they've lacked the whip that we said in the first half. And they've put Davenport on up front alongside Goodman and uh, Harford now, so they're still not really getting people into good wide positions, and it's indicative of, of Kevin Ball getting forward so much, and he's a fullback. Goodman's taken a bit of a buffeting today. Physio Steve Smelt out there with him. Jerry Taggart swapping stories with Vic Callow. Jerry Taggart, by the way, is the most capped player in Barnsley's history. Took that honour from uh, Eddie McMorrin, I think it was previously. Before your day, Chris. Yeah, I you're a lot older than I am, John, so you remember that one. Well, that's Roger Jones, the former York City goalkeeper on the near side of your picture there. Bobby Ferguson on the far side, who of course was assistant to Bobby Robson of uh, Ipswich in the old uh, days down at Portman Road. Sunderland certainly need Goodman. Yes, his, his hard work and his pace and the chances that he could possibly get towards the end of this game, hopefully. Sunderland's throw is taken to Goodman by Ball. <laughs> so the fans seem to have been booing Don Goodman for most of the day. I'm not quite sure why. He's been involved in one or two incidents but I think he was the aggrieved on a couple of occasions rather than the aggressor this is Gray sort of hunt halfway inside Barsley's half where Harford couldn't control it he's only had the one chance today Mick Harford really and he spurned that that's a foul on ours free kick conceded over there by Gary Fleming who knew it First time he's really attacked the fullback this half as well, Gary Allers, and uh, they managed to get a free kick out of it, but he should have been doing that more often. 
If Sunderland score now, we'll have a grandstand finish. They do need a goal badly. And here is their free kick. It's beyond Butcher, it's beyond Bennett, it's falling for Cunnington. And again, he can't beat Whitehead as Goodman rushes in. And again, he did nothing wrong, despite what the crowd thought. Cunnington's had the two best chances of this half. Yes, he kept the shot down well. Good ball in from Gary Hours. And it's dropped. Here it is, comes to Cunnington. Keeps it down well, but really straight at the keeper. The keeper did well hold. Back live, the uh, throw out finds ball. And he's made some good positive runs from the right back position. He slotted in well there. As we've said before, he's basically a centre back. But I saw one or two Sunderland heads go down just then when that ball was played out of play as if to accept that it's not their day. That might be doing them an injustice, but with ten minutes to go, they should be scrapping for their lives. They're a goal behind. Biggins hooks it. O'Connell knocks it down to Redfern. On to it comes Charlie Bishop. He's got Archdeacon outside him. Barnsley have three men in the penalty area. And Archdeacon won't get the cross in there. I thought Redford might have been just a touch more positive. He might have got a shot in himself with the space he had. Barnsley are about to make a substitution themselves, but not, I don't think, until this corner is taken, or is it? Yes, the referee decides to hold things up now. So that Daniel Graham can come on in place of Ian Hendon. I think it'll be a delayed verdict on Hendon. First match, he found it strange at times. And here comes the former Manchester United player, Daniel Graham. He's got a little less than ten minutes in which to impress. Corner kick for Barnsley. Long. Headed in. Oh, Biggins flattened. Referee says nothing for that. So Bishop hits it. And really, uh, Redford did well to keep that in. Now there's an offside verdict. Interesting moment there. Oh, and, you know. well, there are appeals for a penalty inside the area, but uh, the referee didn't want to know about it. We've just got a slight hold up for the moment. And I'm afraid it's something we definitely don't want to see, is this? he should be escorted out of the ground let's have a look at the replay of that corner kick where Taggett got the first header in Biggins trying to control it Kevin Ball's challenge definitely no penalty that was the right verdict so we've just had a momentary holder but the free kick will be taken now Sunderland's fans are in good voice despite their team being down. Bishop harrying here. It's going to be Sunderland's throw in. Jordan Armstrong, well, he thought it was, and uh, the linesman over on this side, Mr. Berry, having a slight dispute. And a couple of players, and in the end, the throw in is awarded quite rightly to Sunderland. Came off the bars again. from ball onto the head of Goodman but he's got no support there at all Gray a chance now for hours across goes Davis really Chris they haven't been able to get Mick Harford into the game much in this second half no I think you've got to give credit to the two centre backs of, uh, of Barnsley Taggart and Davis who are doing a quite efficient job back there and they're not getting the service but when they do get the ball they've got defenders up their backs and it's very difficult for them they still have a few minutes defending to do, however. Oh, and there, just for a moment, Davis forgot where he was, allowed Davenport in to get a shot on the, just over the target. Well, 
There's the slow motion replay and uh, Devonport yes. with the chance, pumping it into the clear. First real mistake from, uh, from Steve Davis there. And uh, they didn't punish it similar though, did they? That's Deacon. Stepped in play nicely by Graham, and he's come inside the area. The ball over, going for the spectacular carry and a flag save. Lovely save by Norman as David Curry hit that with all his force, left footed. Norman saw the angle and kept it out. Great strike from Curry there. Good work from Daniel Graham on the other side. Cuts back inside, plays it with the outside of his right foot here. Overhead kick, never going to get it, and then it's dropped on the volley. Lovely strike and a good save at the near post. Corner for Barnsley, oh! and it's gone over the top as it happens, but there was a whistle anyway. Steve Davis. There's a Taggart again. Strong man in defence without question, and now Bennett laying the ball forward, and Davis, Davis and Taggart have mopped up everything there. Cunnington back for ball, ball's centre towards Harford, just, he just gave Fleming a little nudge, which was effective, but the ball then fell into the path of the defender for Barnsley. No thrills required from Barnsley at the moment. It's been kept in play. Butcher strides forward, tries to pick somebody out up there. That somebody is Davenport. And then the wider ball here for Goodman. Danger for Barnsley, but Goodman's header in, not good enough at all. And nobody there. Really, if he could have just had a little look before he got the ball and maybe he's held it, got it down on his chest, there was nobody in support for him there in the box. Well, well Chris McManam has been sitting alongside me all afternoon sizing up the options for man of the match time to give the verdict Chris well my man of the match uh, today is Jerry Taggart I think as we said before they've done very well the two centre backs and Jerry in particular for me it's quite an efficient job but he's, he's nullified Harford and uh, Goodman and whatever service they've had they haven't really had any joy good game from him Jerry Taggart has been an absolute rocket Barnsley since he joined them from Manchester City and they'll be in here again defending against this now. Goodman tries to tee it up for Paul, but Curry, every man jack there for Barnsley. It's Curry who puts it out. And there is Jerry Taggart who acknowledges his man of the match award, which has just been announced. And I think, uh, don't think anybody in the Barnsley crowd certainly would argue against that. Sunderland aren't beaten yet. Ball laid in low. Cunnington was coming for it. Davenport's got a chance to equalise. Fine stop again by Phil Whitehead. When he's had to do, he's made the stops. That was a tremendous save. Uh, a good little move there from Sunderland, and it fell to uh, Davenport on the right hand side. Snapshot, and he got very, very sharply down to his left. You can see here he's six yards out. Great reaction save, and he got up to hold the second attempt. The last time we hear Lee Butler starred as goalkeeper today, Phil Whitehead has certainly done exactly the same thing. And it looks as though uh, Barnsley might well win again 1-0. They beat Newcastle by that score. But Sunderland have this free kick, so let's not preempt anything. Free kick for Sunderland. Armstrong, he can curl them. Uh, that's just what he does. Gary Bennett's up there. Goodman's gone in, and Whitehead's gone down to claw the ball again. He's had a very good last few minutes, Phil Whitehead. And you think they loaned him out to Bradford City earlier this season? I bet they're glad he's here now. Yes, a floated ball in. Two or three bodies go for it here. I think Gary Bennett just gets a touch or comes off the defender, and he's very sharp off his line and covers his defender as well. 1-0 may sound slender, but it will certainly do at the moment for Barnsley as we go into the last 60 seconds. I think no value for it. 
especially in this uh, second half, have been the better side, and Sunderland just somehow have never had the ambition for me today. It's too little too late for Sunderland. They've had a couple of chances towards the end, but haven't really done enough during the game. Well, they might have another chance themselves here. It's only been cleared as far as Graham. He keeps it in play. Curry keeps possession by knocking it back to Fleming. Biggins. Bit of urgency now required from Tony Norman as he dribbles the ball out. Not much time to be added on for injuries in this game, that's for sure. So Hours pumps it out wide here for Cunnington, who's forced two excellent saves from Whitehead. Ball. In it goes. Far post comes half, but it's just that bit ahead of him. And it's been an unrewarding debut for McArthur so far. He's been waiting for service all game, and it's come just towards the end there. And uh, just ran away from him, a couple of yards too far forward for him there. Redford drives on for Barsley, dispossessed by Butcher, however. He doesn't want to see his side lose another game. And that's the way they're headed at the moment. And their passing game hasn't been good enough. Butcher now. Curry. Oh, he could have delayed things and played Taggart up some space at the left, but instead it's Norman again clearing for Sunderland. The last throw from them may be Fleming's clearance finds Kerry. Kerry, who's got the ability to take people on. It's going to be a Barnsley throw in. Steve Smelt throwing the ball back as quickly as Sunderland wanted to be, and time certainly slipping away for them. Taggart first to it. The man of the match, Jerry Taggart. Barnsley don't want to concede anything in these closing seconds, so ball is deprived, and down the line goes Biggins. He'll just retain possession, I fancy, here. Though they are desperately trying to get men forward in support of him. He's uh, crossing it now, and straight onto the foot of the Sunderland man, Gray. There are three Barnsley men there, too. Butcher for Sunderland. Is there a finish on here yet for the side from the northeast? Harford taking it back from Cunnington. Armstrong. It's not really a positive enough ball. And in any event, it was offside. We thought Wayne Biggers would keep hold of it then. Unfortunately, he gave the ball away, and all of a sudden there was a break gone for Sutherland. But as they've done so many times this half, disappointed in their, their build up play and their approach play, and nothing came of it again. There can only be seconds left now. And he's lost out, and Biggins goes up the middle. He can get a second. Wayne Biggins around the keeper. Is the angle too tight? No, it isn't. Two for Biggins, two for Barnsley. Three points in the back. Great finish from Wayne Biggins. Again, we all probably thought he took it around the keeper and went a bit too far wide, but he hooked his leg around it, put it in the net. Two goals, three points, and a big smile on his face. Yes, it's not one of the better of the match award. Good true ball. Wayne Biggins here taking it on, and he's got the composure that all good strikers possess. Around Norman, ball can't hold him off, and the angle, it wasn't too acute after all. Great finish. And it puts the seal on Barnsley's day. And here's Harper trying a belated shot for Sunderland. But Wayne Biggins' record is quite remarkable for Barnsley. 18 goals now this season and seven in seven matches. He's on the boil. Well, and inspired by, of course, Mel Machen's had him at Norwich and Manchester City as well. He knows all about him. And Barnsley have won the day. Three very good points for them. Thanks to those two goals from Wayne Biggins.
in very different circumstances. What a cracking free kick in the first half. The second, which we've just seen in the very last minute, Wayne Biggins gets the two goals which secure the three points here for Barnsley, and Phil Whitehead made his contribution with some excellent saves in the second half. But it's Barnsley who triumph here by two goals to nil against Sunderland. The verdict of Terry Yorath coming up after the break. back to Oakville where it's been an excellent afternoon for Barnsley. They've beaten Sunderland here by two goals to nil. The first one, a cracking free kick in the first half from Wayne Biggins. And Wayne Biggins got the second goal as well, just near the end, Terry Orth, and uh, superbly taken. Yeah, it was. By that time, uh, Sunderland had thrown bodies forward and Terry Butcher had gone up front. So they're wide open at the back. I just thought that he'd overrun this ball, taking it too wide. Very wide, isn't it? But good goal scorer that he is. He slotted it home. He played well this afternoon. And that happened in injury time. And here he is again from another angle. He did go terribly wide, didn't he? His first test was good. Tony Norman's done what he had to do. Shoveled him wide. But there I thought he'd gone. Uh, and that's good goal scoring. You know, he, he kept his head. Obviously, he must have known it was the last minute of the game anyway. In fact, it was into injury time, in fact. So well done to Wayne Biggins. And well done also to Jerry Taggart, who got the vote from Chris McMenemy as man of the match. And he's here live with Robert Caffrey. Jerry, congratulations there, Bobby. Enjoy. That makes a change from the Biggins and the, all the glamour boys getting man of the match, doesn't it? Yes, I thought uh, Bertie played brilliant. He took his two goals magnificently, especially the first one. Um, today was a very hard game. I thought uh, Sunderland played very well, but at the end of the day, we just took the chances and stuck them in. The, the turning point, many, many people s would see it, is when you maybe dragged Don Goodman back in the first half and the, and the referee said play on. How did you see the incident? Well, uh, it was originally my foul give a, I went to head it back to the keeper and I didn't connect with it right and Don got in behind me. Uh, did you pull I him? Was, I was struggling to get back but I think Don would be right in saying that he did dive a bit and uh, if he had a stood up he would have, I think he might even went on and scored so who knows. I don't think you'll have many harder games up against Harford and Goodwin, they're strong men aren't they? Yeah I've played against Mick Harford before and he's a very strong player, very good in the air. Um, give me a bit of problems in the first half running onto the ball when I was tending to stand and jump. But in the second half, uh, I got the grips with it, and all, all credit to all the back four, just not myself. We played, we, we kept it tight at the back today. Well, all credit to you. Maybe share the bubbly with the back four. Congratulations. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Taggart. Well, maybe things would have been a little bit easier for him and his colleagues in the back four that he was talking about there if Wayne Biggins had taken a chance that he had early in the second half, because that could have made it 2 0 much earlier than Biggins finally did produced that scoreline. He was clear, Terry, knew what he was going to do, just didn't quite get it right. Good ball through to him. I don't think the ball came as high as what he wanted it to. And yeah. He seemed to catch it just on the bottom of his shin. Um, Tony Norman was in no man's land, really. You know, he, he's out there, he's, he's well in line to be lobbed, and Wayne would have been disappointed with that. But summing up, uh, a good afternoon for Barnsley. They, they oh, good play afternoon. much better in the second half than the first. I've seen them play better, and perhaps not win games. Uh, they did what they had to do, they contained uh, Sunderland. Uh, Hartford was always going to be a threat with, with Goodman. And in the end, they won the game. They won it well. Okay, Terry, thank you very much indeed. We have more football action coming for you and more, reac more, more reaction to the game here after this break. Stay with us. back to Oakwell. Some excellent goals from around the region coming up in just a second. But first, let's hear from the man who scored two real quality goals for Barnsley that beat Sunderland here at Oakwell. It's Wayne Biggins with Rob McCaffrey. Yes, Wayne Biggins, uh, a bright shirt, a bright tie and a, a bright performance from you this afternoon. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Uh, over the last few weeks, I've had a bit of a disappointing few games and uh, it was nice, especially in front of the cameras, uh, to put a performance in like that. First goal particularly, very special. You can't have scored many better than that. I think we'd have a look at it now. What's going through your mind here? Well, it, it was a toss-up between three of us who was going to hit the ball. And uh, I fancied it more than the other two. And, uh, Did you know it was going in as soon as you hit it? I closed my eyes when I shot. <laughs> but uh, no, like I say, between any one of us who was going to hit the ball. I must admit, the second, this is the second goal here. I thought you'd maybe just held on a bit too long. Uh, yeah, I made the mistake in the first chance that I got a little bit earlier. Uh, I tried to t uh, lob the keeper, but this time I thought I'd go round him. And, uh, so, yeah. Good. Two goals, you win the match, you don't even get man of the match award. Jerry Taggart's waltz off with the champagne. 
No, I thought I thought the defence were outstanding today. Uh, Sunderland are a really strong strong team. Uh, and just before I, I scored the first goal, uh, they were just beginning to get on top, so it came at a nice time. But uh, I thought the defence for Barnsley today were brilliant. OK, Wayne, many congratulations. Great performance today. Well done. Cheers, thanks a lot. Thanks so much indeed to Rob McCaffrey down there in the tunnel area. Next, as promised, have a look at the goals from around the region. Action from nine matches and three divisions starting in Division 1. Grimsby's playoff aspirations were severely dented by Leicester City. There isn't a more robust player in the league than Steve Walsh, a centre-half currently doing a Paul Warhurst. His headed goal on 13 minutes was his sixth in the last five games. The contest was as good as over in the first quarter. That's Walsh again unnerving the Mariners' defence, and although David Lowe tries to claim a touch, it was in fact an own goal by Paul Groves. It looked like being a rout when Leicester scored their third after 26 minutes. A neat turn and shot by David Oldfield, but that's where the scoring ended. Leicester 3, Grimsby 0. The first half at Valley Parade was forgettable. The second, only three minutes old when Wigan handed Bradford a goal on a plate. John McCarthy gobbled up the tasty morsel served up by goalkeeper Pennock, and it seemed to give him extra strength. Within three minutes, the visiting captain, Kevin Langley, absented himself from any fight back, a red card for a second bookable offence. And when McCarthy went tumbling in the box, Bradford had been given a goal, a numerical advantage and a penalty inside seven minutes. Gary Williams made the three points just about safe, but they're still five points off the playoffs. Meetings with Rotherham on Tuesday and West Brom live on YTV next Sunday are crucial, and the defending will have to be sharper than this, John Robertson forcing in a late Wigan consolation. Bradford 2, Wigan 1. An important game for both Hull City and Mansfield Town was settled at Boothbury Park when Darren France and David Jones contrived to send Linton Brown through. His reward was a personal first goal in the league and Hull's first home win this year. Hull City 1, Mansfield Town 0. To Leeds Road, Huddersfield now, and a sight to conjure up unfortunate memories for Scunthorpe fans, Blackpool, the team who denied them promotion in the playoff final at Wembley, and in particular Dave Bamber, a scorer then, a scorer now to threaten Huddersfield's recent revival. But the arrival of Mick Buxton as Ian Ross's right-hand man seems to have returned the resolve to the team who, after all, were also in the playoffs just ten months ago. They're getting a few breaks now as well. Ian Dunn brought down with no particular place to go. Penalty. Kieran O'Regan. 1 1. The 29 year old Irishman has moved from midfield to the injury hit defensive ranks at present and is doing a sterling job. A second goal was only three minutes away, all Gary Barnett's own work. Winning the chase, keeping his head, picking his spot. 2 1 at half time. Suddenly, Huddersfield were on their way out of the dark months of despair. If Ian Ure has certainly seen the light, his header knocked by Peter Jackson into Phil Starbuck's path on 48 minutes, and the rest was mainly iffy. Anura, remember, hadn't scored all season in the league until last Saturday. Now, from Dunn's cross, his third in three games. 4-1 to Huddersfield, already their highest league score of the season, and iffy could do no wrong. Don't you believe it? His speed and strength enable him to do the difficult bit, but his composure lets him down a little. And watch the man on the terrace here. No one more disappointed than Anura himself, but he was soon back for more. Simon Charlton's power header set up the run. Credit to goalkeeper Dickens and defender Murray. No one could accuse Iffy of not being involved. He seemed to be thriving in the absence of the injured Ewan Roberts, the normal central striker. The gaps were coming now because Blackpool never stopped trying to go forward, and the Tangerine team got some reward through the inevitable telegraph pole. Bamba measuring out his full six foot three. Not bad going at the age of 34. He was actually born a fortnight before Mick Harford. Don't think he'd lost a contact lens, just some mud in the eye. Bamba had left his mark on the match, but this was a Nora and Huddersfield's day. And they had the final word with five minutes to go from Mark Stewart's cross. Nine wins all season at Huddersfield, four of them in the last 11 days. 
and they're out of the relegation zone at last, with games in hand over all their rivals. Huddersfield 5, Blackpool 2. York's caretaker manager Alan Little was in jovial mood before yesterday's encounter with Bury, but unfortunately all that was to change in the course of the next 90 minutes. Bury's opener wasn't quite as big a fluke as Rangers' winner in midweek, but the outrageous deflection coming up off Gary Swan showed which way the luck was going. Tony Rigby naturally claimed the goal. It was his first ever. Now for a blemish in the Berry defence. Nick Dawes, the one who looks like a Cherokee Indian, muffed whatever he was trying to do and invited John McCarthy to equalise, which he promptly did. McCarthy's fourth goal of the season, but his first since October. Three minutes later, Berry dumped York out of the top three. Ian Stevens made the break. And with City's defence spread-eagled, the clearance by Paul Stancliffe pounced upon by Rigby, who now has two Football League goals to his name. York City 1, Berry 2. A day that began with high hopes for Chesterfield ended in a long and gloomy journey home from Cardiff. There was a chance that victory would take them into the playoff places, and if Gavin Ward hadn't been so alert to deny Dave Lancaster, they might have got one. But mites and maybes don't affect your league position. Ball watching, defending like that often does. Carl Dale snapped up the gift to bring some Welsh delight on another day of rugby union disappointment in the Valleys. Pushing forward, Chesterfield were exploited at the back. The finish from former Halifax man Nick Richardson deserves credit, but it was tough on Chesterfield, who will feel they'd done enough to draw level. They did get one back when Cliff Carr's pass eventually found its way through to Dave Lancaster, but it wasn't enough, and with most other results going against them, Chesterfield are now five points below the playoff places. Cardiff 2, Chesterfield 1. There's one thing about watching Scarborough, you do see plenty of goals. Take the match at Sinsel Bank yesterday. Just past the hour, Mark Evans was ruled by referee Gurnham Singh to foul Lincoln's Neil Matthews. Scarborough manager Ray McHale described the decision as diabolical. Whatever, it was a penalty, and that enabled Ian Barraclough to crack in his fourth goal in half a dozen games. Five minutes later, Evans used his head to make an unorthodox clearance. Matt Carmichael returned the ball to the danger zone swiftly, and perhaps Evans' head was still in a spin when Jason Lee beat him with a low shot. Time for Lincoln keeper Mike Pollitt to catch the eye. A spectacular save from this volley, his best contribution. In fact, he was almost caught out soon afterwards. Paul Mudd's cross completely fooling him, the upright saving any embarrassment. Two minutes from time, and Lincoln boosted their own playoff hopes. Neil Matthews on a real do-it-yourself mission here. His ninth goal of the season, his sixth and seventh matches, a severe jolt for the Seasiders. Lincoln City 3, Scarborough 0. For Scunthorpe, a point against Wrexham is more than most teams have managed recently, but it could have been three. Richard Crisp bundled over by the Wrexham goalkeeper Mike Morris on 64 minutes. Penalty, says Jason White, the Scunthorpe number eight. The referee agrees. Morris stayed on the field, presumably because Crisp was not a judge to have had a clear run at goal. Dave Hill missed the penalty. Scunthorpe at 14. Scunthorpe nil, Wrexham nil. You could have been forgiven for thinking you were at a local carnival rather than a third division football match at the Shea. The band played on as young and old alike, enjoyed a firework display, free or reduced admission charges depending on your age, and a rare opportunity to stand behind the goal. And the balloon really went up with the sort of goal that attracts people to football in the first place. A rocket of a shot from Halifax fullback Billy Barr. And at the right end in every sense for the new Halifax fans in a season's biggest crowd of 3,872. And no matter where you saw the goal from, it was quite wonderful. Shrewsbury were often second best, yet they're challenging for promotion and their eagerness was epitomised by their goal, Mark Blake, finally forcing the ball through despite the efforts of Barr and goalkeeper Lee Bracey. Town, desperately fighting for survival, of course, might still have won the day. Jamie Patterson, always the tiniest man on the field and often the trickiest, set up the chance. 
but Mick Matthews denied the glory Shrewsbury keeper Paul Edwards just getting the necessary fingernail to keep it out. Halifax turn one, Shrewsbury turn one. Well, there were some decent goals amongst that, weren't there? But I think the one from Billy Barr for Halifax takes the biscuit, doesn't it? That was a tremendous strike. Uh, I wonder if he meant it, though. <laughs> kind of got used to it every week, wasn't it? Oh, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, I don't know why the keeper tried to save it. <laughs> well, let's hope Halifax stay in the Football League. Certainly that will have done their, uh, their chances no harm at all. Let's have a look at some of the results from games that are taking place elsewhere this afternoon. First of all, we have a latest score for you from the Premier League. It's Nottingham Forest 1, Leeds United 1. And two results from Division 1, Derby County 2, Swindon 1, and Southend 3, Millwall 3. And those results mean that Barnsley go up to 11th place in Division 1. Now you can see the best of the Premier League action, including that Nottingham Forest Leeds game, and the two games yesterday involving the two Sheffield clubs in the Sunday edition of Calendar, which comes up at 10 to 6 after Survival. And the next board after that on YTV is Nigel Mansell's sensational, successful IndyCar debut down in Australia. And that's on YTV tomorrow night at 5 past midnight. As for us, we're back next week with more live football for you. It comes from Bally Parade, Bradford City, desperate for points to keep their playoff hopes alive against one of their chief rivals in Division 2, West Bromwich Albion. And we'll also have extended highlights from Ashton Gate, Bristol City against Grimsby Town. But now we leave you from a satisfied Oakwell, Barnsley 2, Sunderland 0. From us all here, goodbye.